decided to um, do a series until we get a good grasp on inspiration and courage and um, encouragement because I just seen one of um, ASM artists having battles in their lives and that um, makes me want to read more of this and um, her ASMR channel is Light in the Darkness ASMR and um, she was courageous enough to tell us what she's going through and from anxieties to worries and health issues and all that sort. So, thank you, Light in the Darkness, ASMR, um, for being courageous and just telling us what you're going through and prayers. We all need prayers. And what a good timing that is because we are um, watching and reading this together. And for any of you who is interested, um, this is the book that we are reading and maybe you want to read it um, yourselves in your own spare time. But yes, by David Jeremiah, slaying the giants in your life. You can win the battle and live victoriously. Are you ready to stand against the giants that seek to terrorize today's believers? But anyways, let me go ahead and read where I left off, which was page 14. giants in your life. Those verses are the best fear insurance you can invest in. Memorize them. Write them out or pin them on cards and place them in locations where you might be attacked. Let the word of God fortify your spirit. And of course, those verses are the only, are only the beginning. Read through God's word and you'll find so many more insurances for times of fear. The inspired writers knew what it was like to be afraid in the ancient world. They had fears we can't even imagine. Peter and Paul had to face fear. Jesus prayed in Gethsemane, knowing exactly what lay ahead of him in the hours to come. All of these found their strength in God, and you can benefit richly from their spiritual wisdom. Look up a fear in your Bible's concordance, and then look up afraid, and then look up afraid. Take in all those passages, soak in their prayer, and the next time the devil comes to get a response out of you, you'll be ready. 
pull five verses from the living water, just like five smooth stones in David's pouch, and let them fly. Don't worry about the fearsome giant. The bigger they come, the harder they fall. The next step may sound simple, so basic that you may shrug it aside. I hope you won't do that. Number four, cultivate a closer relationship with God. Yes, you can confront those fears by drawing near to God. Think back to those spies who entered Canaan. Up to now, we haven't mentioned that there were two dissenters in the group. They went on the same trip, saw the same wild cities and the same giants, and they brought back a minority opinion. Joshua and Caleb listened patiently to all the worst case scenarios and calmly said, we can do this. As I've read this narrative over the years, I've always felt the difference between the ten and the two was that they used different yardsticks. The negative group measured the giants by their own stature, while Joshua and Caleb measured them by God's stature. These two were the only ones who finally measured up to the privilege of entering the promised land. The others fell short. What made the difference for Joshua and Caleb? The scriptures state it clearly. In Numbers 32 verse 12, we read, For they have woolly followed the Lord. You'll find the same message in Deuteronomy chapter 1 verses 36 and Joshua chapter 14 verse 9. Joshua and Caleb were simply different creatures from the rest. The Bible makes clear that they were absolutely filled with the Spirit of God. And they walked with Him in every, every way. Excuse me. It caused them to think differently, act differently, decide differently. And when the time of crisis came, the time when we find out what people are made of, Joshua and Caleb were living proof of what it meant means to have godly courage. These two looked at a land that devoured its inhabitants and said, this is God's will for us. Let's do it. Your fear level is ultimately referendum, referendum on the closeness of your friendship with God. It's a spiritual yardstick. Do you see things in human dimensions or godly ones? After you spend time with your creator, you are simply incapable of shrinking in fear at the appearance of every human anxiety. You've seen his power. You've seen his love and faithfulness. You've seen that his purposes are the best for us. If you have the fear of God, as we used to say, you won't fear the things of this world. If you don't have the fear of God, then everything else is to be feared. There's one other verse that in my judgment is a central New Testament verse on this subject. Think about it carefully. I'd suggest memorizing it. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear because fear involves torment, but he who fears has not been made perfect in love. 1 John chapter 4 verse 18 The opposite of fear, you see, is not courage. It's not trust. The opposite of fear is love. This verse 
captures that beautiful and powerful truth as we've already seen the beginning of this chapter. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. And that's in 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 7. There is it again, fear versus love. I think parents understand this principle where they know that little children often wake up in the dark of the night and they're afraid of the darkness. I've experienced it again in recent times with our grandchildren, little David Todd, who comes for a visit when when he's in our home he'll wake up in that unfamiliar bedroom in the middle of the night and he'll begin to cry it's not just any kind of crying but an I'm afraid kind of crying you parents know what I mean so what do we do I doubt any of us would rush into the room and say come on David be courageous no you and I are much more tender than that We lift the little boy in our arms, nestle him tightly to us, and speak softly with assurance. We tell him, love him. We tell him we love him, and that everything is all right. We help him realize he's in a safe place, and that we are very near as he is the... We help him realize he's in a safe place and that we're very near as he sleeps even if it, it, it's dark we will always protect him and we pour in all the love we can until the fear is cast out and our little child sleeps in peace that's what god does for us when we call on him Hurry, Harry Ironside, a great preacher from years ago, told a story of playing a game called Bears with his young. The grown ups would be the bear and he'd chase a boy all over the house. But one day the game got a bit too intense. The boy was concerned by the bear and he suddenly became truly frightened. It wasn't a game anymore. He hid his face, trembling, and then turned around quickly and threw himself into his father's arms with the words, I'm not afraid of you. You're my daddy. Our father wants us to leap into his arms. That way when we're afraid, he wants us to realize who he really is and that we need n- we need never fear. And the key to the assurance is love, the opposite of fear. To experience in full the love of God is to feel the deepest security in heart, soul, mind, and strength. It is to understand down to the depth of our being that God loves us so much. He will always hold us in his arms and he'll always be near even when it's dark that he is our daddy and that we need not to be afraid and we realize all of this as his incomprehensible love washes through us and cleanses us from fear and anger and selfishness then only then do we find ourselves capable of returning love for remember we love him because he loved us first and you can find that in the bible in first john chapter 4 verses 19 and that's when it happens love begins to dispel fear yes we'll be visited by fears again because we're part of living but they'll never have the same hold on us they'll be the reason fear fears of touching the hot stove or crossing the busy street the irrational controlling fears will not be allowed to dominate the heart for the heart is home to the holy spirit now he will not allow it as a matter of fact 
we won't have time to nurture some deep fear and build it up to become a giant because the spirit will see that our hands are active in ministry and it's an amazing principle the more you reach out to other people with a need the smaller your fears become again this is long i mean after i mean again this is love casting out of fear it's one more good reason to become active in ministry be an encourager be an ambassador of the love of god i know of no better prescription of mis misery of any kind i know of no better prescription for misery of any kind as you can see there's nothing trite about my advising you to cultivate a closer relationship with a god that's the ultimate fear strategy children who are afraid call on their parents it's no different for adults who are afraid but the parent whose name we call is so much more powerful so much more loving so much more responsive if your life isn't if your life is filled with anxiety and irrational fears draw near to god starting today 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 increase your time in the his increase your time in his word devote more time to prayer and keep a prayer journal of how he comforts you in times of fear my final point calls on you to be certain you're able to draw near to him five commit your life to jesus christ there is one ultimate fear every human must face one fear that stands taller than all the others the ultimate giant is death itself the fear of death causes people to do strange things i once knew a man who kept a canister of oxygen in every room in his home his cars had those little tanks the bathrooms the bedrooms the kitchen the garage everywhere there was oxygen canisters one day as i visited him i asked him the meaning of his obsession he explained explained well i have a little bit of a heart problem i'm afraid that one day these one of these days I might have a heart attack and I won't be able to get the oxygen I need and then I'll die. He concluded, I'll do everything in my power to hedge my bet. And so, to smother his life in security, he made it into a life that was all about oxygen canisters. Caution is a good thing. Phobias are unhealthy. When the appointed day arrives when God has called you home, all the oxygen canisters in the world will not buy you another second of life. The real question is, are you desperate for another second, another hour, another day? If so, why does death hold so much terror for you? Are you so eager to avoid the beautiful gates of heaven and open the arms of God? I know that I'm not afraid of death. I can say this because I've been right out to the edge of mortality. Look at death. Faith. Look at death in the face and discovered that i'm not afraid i'm willing to move on to the next destination though i'm not eager to get a head start i hope i happen to love life i'm devoted i'm devoted to my ministry and my family and i have no desire to die but it's a wonderful thing to come to a sense of place peace about the finality of this life it's good to be able to say I'm not afraid to die. Paul understood that it's a win-win situation for God's people. He wrote, For to me, to live is Christ, and to die is gain. For me, for to me, to live is Christ, and to die is gain. For to me, to live is Christ, and to die is gain. I like that. I heard that song before somewhere. Anyways, for to me to live is Christ and to die is gain. It is in Philippians chapter 1 verses 21 in the Bible. 
we can stay on earth and experience the joy of Christ or we can move on to the next life and occupy those mansions he's gone to prepare. Either way, we have got it made. Why fear for things in this life? Why fear the doorway that leads to the next one? Yet you and I both know that. Yet you and I know people who move through this life wearing the shackles of a lifelong fear of death. The chains hold them back from any enjoyment or fulfillment in life. But there's an interesting passage in Hebrews that tells us how we ought to think about death. In as much, oh, in as much then as the children have part taken of flesh and blood he himself likewise shared in the same that through death he might destroy him who had the power of death that is the devil and release those who through and release those who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage um hebrews chapter 2 verses 14 through 15 there it is in a nutshell the most important truth of history death had dominion over this world all people had to live in its tranny and life was dominated by death then god came into the world in gus and the gus goise g-u-i-s-e of human flesh in order to share everything we experience. He stretched out his arms on that great wooden cross and he gave himself up. As the sky darkened and the earth shook and history turned upside down, Jesus hung between heaven and earth, reaching the ultimate gulf that could not be closed in any other way. That changed everything. He bought eternity back to you and me you and me and he brought us home again to God the power of death was totally broken death has no power at all outside of the lies and distortions of the deceiver the devil wants you to believe that death is still a giant he wants you to believe your sins still give death the final word and that you must therefore live in terror but the truth is that Jesus paid the debit your sins will not be held against you now if you'll accept the gift that jesus purchased with his life we can rest in the assurance and find liberation from fear we can trust god as aaron swavely did he was a softball game he was at a softball game you may remember when he heard his wife and children had been in a serious automobile accident his daughter alicia was in the great gravest danger she was in a coma. The doctors offered little hope that she would ever come out of it. Aaron simply turned her over to Jesus. He tried his heart to be like Abraham to trust God with this precious child. Alicia, seven years old, did enter heaven. The family grieved deeply and worked through their pain, but, but they had done one thing. They had allowed Alicia to be an organ donor. And when they think of Herb today, they know that a 16-year-old boy is alive because of her liver. Two others have sight. Life is most difficult of all when the unthinkable happens and we lose a child. But Aaron and his family got to know God even more deeply through the crisis. They learned that he uses everything and everyone. They can face nearly anything after God's help through that time. Deanna Teeters lived through a miracle. When the intruder entered their house and attacked them, he intended to kill them all, but something stopped him. Perhaps the prayer of Dana on the spot. Her husband worked for the bank, and that's why the man had broken in. After taking her husband and granddaughters there and getting money he left everyone unharmed except for stitches and bandages everyone came out all right and the show inside edition told the teeter story 
The police considered it a miracle that no one was killed. Diana wasn't surprised at all. Today she was praying about going to visit the intruder in prison. God wants her to reach out. As for Ivory Wilderman, she endured surgery, chemotherapy, and radiation. No matter what happened, no matter what happened, she told herself God would be there. Through the long nights of uncertainty, she called out God's name, sought him through the scriptures, and clung to her faith and desperation. God drew near. The victory came, she said. As I took my thoughts captive, prayed, read the Bible, recalled verses I'd mem me memorized, and sang potent praise songs. Potent. 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 With each conquest, the fear thoughts grew weaker. The fearful thoughts grew weaker. Today, she is married. Support group for cancer victims. God is victorious. She says with joy, yes, God is victorious. So are we. And we take the counsel of these wise, wise friends. Fear not. These are giants in the land, but next to our Lord, they're a little more than grasshoppers. And that is the end of the first chapter. I'll go ahead and go to the second chapter. pages in the second chapter of slaying the giants in your life you can win the battle and live victoriously by david jeremiah Leave it for the next 